Today we're going to build a battle board. Now I'm building this particular battle board to use with the game Song of Blades and Heroes. But the techniques we're going to use will work for um, really any war game that you don't need hexes or grids, Warhammer, any of the historicals where you just have an open field. So I started by um, building a framework. Now Song of Blades and Heroes, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, a skirmish level game with very small war bands. So they recommend a board no larger than 36 by 36. I went a little smaller so that it fits nicely on my card table. Started by building a framework and then I cut a piece of pink foam insulation. If you do any kind of war gaming, you're probably familiar with this. You can get it at Home Depot, all hardware stores, building supply stores. And um, just cut out the shape that you need. I glued it in. And the first thing we're going to do is scuff up the surface a little bit. Now make sure you put it the right way up. One side has plastic and printing on it. The other side does not. This is the side that you want facing up. So I'm going to take a sanding block and I'm going to rough it up. Shake the dust off, and this is just to help the paint stick and so it isn't too terribly smooth, although by the time we're done, we're not going to see much of this texture. Second step is, um, a lot of people will prime it. I just like to use acrylic paint. I have a ton of really inexpensive paint from Walmart. And I'm just going to start by giving this a good coating of brown paint. And if you're a fan of the Van Wilder movies, you probably love the noises it's making right now. And just to make sure that it isn't too regular, I'm going to throw in some other colors that blend with it just here and there. So we'll have a few patches where, the, where it's reddish brown, where it's yellowish brown. Just a little more brown here. Make sure we get the edges. Let's see how far this gets us. Now obviously you could use a paintbrush for this. I'm going to use a piece of sponge. I'm going to use the smooth side to rub this around and then I'm going to use the rough side later for some texture. And I'm going to be painting the frame brown anyway, so I don't mind if some paint gets on it. So now we've laid down our base coat. While it's still wet, I'm going to select some areas 
I'm going to sprinkle on some sand and some gritty material. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to have certain spots that are covered in grass, but certain spots that are going to be brown, and we want them to look a little more natural and earthy. So, um, you know, we're not making a golf course here. We're making a battlefield. It's going to be scarred and pitted a little bit. So that will be our next step. I'm just going to do this in different patches here and there. I'm not going to put a roadway or anything. Sometimes I've seen people do that in battlefields. I've even done it with one. But with this being such a small space, I don't want it to ever feel like it's I'm playing the same battle over and over. So I want to leave a lot of room for variety. That's also why we're not going to build any hills or slopes directly onto this board. We'll do that on independent pieces. All right, so now we're going to give it a little time to dry. Now next step, I've taken the ragged edge of my sponge and I've got some green paint on it, not a lot, just very lightly, as if I were going to dry brush with a paintbrush. And I'm just going to pat on little patches of green on top of the brown. And something that would do an even better job is if you go into the paint section of your home improvement store, they have these funky sponges. They look like sea sponges, and they're actually designed to do stuff like this and put funky shapes and patterns on there. But I'm just trying to do a little something about the unrelenting brown before we start gluing on flocking. That way, if there are places where our flocking doesn't cover, it's not going to look like just plain brown everywhere. Alright, so we'll give that a little more dry time and then we'll move on to the next step. And truly, there's nothing more exhilarating than watching someone shake flocking onto a board. So, yeah, I may have to edit this out. Or maybe not. I guess it depends on whether or not it makes me laugh when I replay it. Alright, we from here we will give it some time to dry. 
then we will shake off the excess and see how it looks. All right, so here's what it looks like now. I did make a couple more additions to it because it still was a little bit too dark, not enough contrast for my taste. So I bought some burnt grass turf that I sprinkled into different areas to give it some lighter patches. And I also got some what they call low growth plants, which is really just a mixture of dark green and yellow that I plugged in in just a couple patches here and there. And then you might can see that I did wind up working in gravel around the edges where I did a lousy job of cutting the foam to fit. So that way it's not going to be in the way when I stack other things on it. So let's put some figures and some terrain on it, see how it looks. And here we are with a little bit of terrain on it. Let's see, we've got the Templars doing battle with a Hydra invasion. And it looks pretty good. The, um, the tower here is from an old game called Battle Masters. And the little broken walls are from Confrontation, which I think is still available. The gargoyles, those are from hobby stores, craft stores like Michael's. You can get them around Halloween. Same with the little pile of skulls over here. The trees are from HeroScape, but you can get much more realistic looking trees from places like Hobby Lobby. So, that is the first level of our battle board. And we'll be back in another video making him.